Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today we have this. This is uh, Acer E17 series. Specifically, this is the E5 721-47M5. And I know it just rolls right off the tongue. This is a 17.3 inch laptop. It is absolutely massive and it is absolutely plastic. Let's dive right in and take a look at a couple of things. You can immediately tell, and I'm almost certain of this, that this keyboard is going to be plastic welded into the top deck and it has what I would call a moderate degree of flex. Uh, the typing experience is far from fantastic, but you're not buying this for the keyboard, you're buying it for the screen. So let's be real about that. Speaking of screens, we may as well start our exploration there. It is literally so large that I can't fit it all with my current filming setup, but it essentially came in two flavors, a 1920 by 1080 display, or in this case, a 1600 by 900 display. And they really want you to know that that is an HD webcam. Uh, that is a selling feature on this. It's actually on the sticker on the keyboard deck itself. Uh, along with there being a numpad. Ooh. And we've got a precision trackpad as opposed to one that doesn't work at all. And then it is M disk ready. And I'm actually going to have to look up what that is. Does it mean like mini disk? I'll have to, have to do some investigation. Other specifications to note are actually listed right here on this sticker. So this is a AMD quad core A4 6210. And as far as I can tell, it's actually the lowest tier CPU that came with these. Again, finding information about these is actually quite difficult because they span many generations with the E17 chassis, and there isn't a massive database that I can just go and look at on Acer's website. You can see how these are actually going across several different generations and using, from what I understand, essentially the same chassis. Your GPUs will vary either being an AMD Radeon R3, which is featured in this, the Radeon R4, the Radeon R8 M365DX, or a GeForce 840M or 940MX. Again, that'll depend on what CPU you're able to track down with these, which GPU you can expect to find. RAM in this is four gigabytes of DDR3 low power, 1600 megahertz. Finding out a maximum amount of RAM, again, is difficult. The literature that I'm finding is supporting up to 16 gigabytes. If you have it lying around, I guess you could put it in, but uh, just be aware that your mileage may vary with the actual maximum amount of RAM. And the last thing worth mentioning is that this is being driven by a 49 watt hour battery. Now, on this specific one, that doesn't seem to be a problem, even though it's got a massive display, it's not a 920 by 1080 display, so that again isn't too much of an issue. So let's just do a quick tour of the ports here. On the left hand side we have the power plug, VGA, Ethernet, HDMI, two USB 3.0, and a headphone microphone combo jack. On the front we have an SD card reader hanging out over here. And then on the right hand side we have two USB 2.0, our optical drive, and our Kensington lock slot. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's see how difficult it is going to be to get into this plastic fantastic. There is no access to the battery, so we have a series of screws that are keeping us out of this machine. We do have essentially one pictogram here, and it's not entirely clear what it's a pictogram of, but I've pretty much come to terms with that every single one of these screws is probably going to have to be removed for us to gain access. The only one that might be like an easy out is this one right here because it looks like it's in line with the optical drive. So if I spin that out and yeah, I, I win the prize there. That was easy. Now for the hard part. So I'll, I'll be back in a second once I've removed all these screws. All right, I think that's all of the screws. That must be coming awfully close to however many 
I pulled out of the, the Dell Ruggedized laptop from a while back. Like this is, this is a lot. And honestly, I think I've pulled out so many screws that there is probably not much very remaining metal in this entire thing. When you're disassembling a laptop like this, it's always, you always have to keep in the back of your mind that there's probably ribbon cables awaiting uh, to trap us. How I recommend to uh, minimize that is to be ready to catch this piece right here when it falls down. So we do have a separation here at the front SD card slot. So we're gonna insert our tool there and just gently pry to pop that first clip. So far so good. And now that we've got a perch, we're gonna switch over to plastic to try and <laughs> not damage anything too badly. I will say that these clips are very, very stiff. All right, that side is loosened up. So let's keep going down this side. And it looks like we're actually gonna be able to put this down because this black uh, bottom cap looks like it's gonna lift right off. Now, one thing that I'm looking at here that could be a problem is this plastic seems to be in perfect line with the VGA connector. So I'm actually going to continue to open it over on this side and then move it over and hopefully not uh, damage any plastic clips there. All right, it has finally let go and no ribbons. Ha, that's a pleasant surprise. Okay, so let's spin this around and see what we got. Our optical bay of course would sit right there. That comes out and is away. And you know what? This is not terrible when it comes to the use of space. It's not great, but it's not terrible. We've actually got a lot facing us that is very quickly serviceable. We have the Wi-Fi card hanging out here with the antenna that runs up. No issues there. We have our two RAM slots on this side of the board. We have what would appear to be the cooler for the CPU. We have our main board. We've got our display connector hanging out in the top right hand corner. Our, wow, it's just a coin cell. It's not even a CMOS like plug-in battery. You could get that at a, at a jeweler. That's kind of nice to see. We've got our battery pack waiting here. That's actually decently sized. We've got downward firing speakers on either end. We have our USB 2.0 daughter board and we've got our hard drive hanging out here. You know, as far as laptops that you're not gonna be able to service terribly well, this is not half bad. Like all of the ribbon cables are all in the same spot of the board. Uh, let's go ahead and disconnect the battery and see what the trackpad looks like underneath, if that's plastic welded on uh, or if it's actually replaceable. So, it does look like the trackpad uh, is potentially removable and repairable. We've got another daughter board for the SD card uh, right there. Uh, we have a lot of ribbon cables in this, certainly a lot more than a few Asus machines that I've seen. Uh, but you know what? I've seen a lot worse. Like these ribbon cables are at least not being used as traps. They've all got connectors on one corner of the board. You know, this is not, this is not the worst I have ever seen. It would also appear that the board would come out without too much difficulty if we detach these and obviously all the ribbon cables, detach that. Yeah, this would actually be a relatively easy laptop to service. It's a heck of a lot of screws to get in, but once you're in, it's it's actually not terrible. Finding parts, on the other hand, is a whole other matter, but I've seen a lot worse. So let's keep going. We will disconnect that. The nice thing is, is that we don't actually have to remove uh, that card or do anything funny. We'll go ahead and disconnect the display cable. Just move that off to the side. We have a series of screws that are actually marked with little arrows, so you know which ones uh, you need to actually replace and put back in to keep the board in. And that's a nice touch. They didn't have to do that. 
so you're not wondering whether or not uh, the screw actually goes through from the case or if you forgot to put one back. That is actually uh, showing a bit of consideration for someone that might have to come in and do some servicing on this on this unit. That's actually nice to see. So I'm gonna try as best as I can to we'll flip up these ribbon connectors like so. And we gotta do the one for the keyboard as well. And we've got a speaker connector over here. And these speaker connectors are usually really, really tight. And this one's no exception. Okay. So yeah, not the worst. Uh, keyboard is plastic welded in, which is, again, a bit of a disappointment, especially when you can see that it's got a part number there. But what can you do? Uh, all in all, this is not the worst designed laptop I have taken apart in this price bracket. They at least uh, show a little bit of uh, consideration for uh, a service technician that would go in and actually do uh, repairs and maintenance on this device. So it is good to see that the human being uh, is being considered, uh, even only for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this and we'll turn it on. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And I will do my best to try and uh, film as much of this as I can. As you can imagine, it is rather large for uh, the film space that I currently have. So we'll just adjust and try to deal with the glare as best we possibly can. So boot time isn't actually too shabby. This screen, like, man oh man, if you need a 17 inch screen, that's interesting for a portable need, but if you do, I think you could do a lot worse than this. Battery time is gonna be approximately four to six hours, depending on how you abuse it. It's actually not terrible considering all the things that it has to drive and the battery capacity. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, for a five year old machine, when this is filmed, so this was made in 2015, June 26 to be exact, it's not terrible. Some of the configurations that you can get it in are actually pretty affordable, and depending on your needs, such as an enormous screen, you could do a lot worse than this. It is held together with a lot of screws and plastic clips, but once you're in, uh, there are no trap ribbons, everything is accessible. The only downside, of course, is that if you have a keyboard issue, you are replacing the entire top case, but everything else is serviceable and modular so long as you can actually source the parts. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I am going to encourage you to do the big four, and one of them is not this laptop. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I feature an oversized laptop, you'll be the first to know about it. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time.